What's up everybody? This is Steven with TechMaker TV and this is building a stock market tracking application with React Part 3. Alright, if you're liking this series, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I don't want you to miss out on all the good stuff we're going to be putting out. Um, but let's go ahead and just keep going with what we were doing in Part 2. So if you remember, which you may because uh, that was just a couple of minutes ago, uh, we were setting up the, uh, the data coming in from the API, or we were about to pull the data in from the API and fill out the rest of this table. Right now we just have these uh, silly placeholders. So let's go ahead and start looking at how we can do that. All right, so first and foremost, we need to set up a constructor. So I need to spell it right too, constructor. And the constructor takes in a props argument. So what a constructor is in any sort of object-oriented programming language, whenever you initialize a new object, you have a constructor. And it basically tells the object how you want to build it. So every time we create a new stock row, this constructor is going to get run. So uh, in this case, uh, because of how React is put together and how JavaScript works, we have to call super props always first because that's going to call the actual component constructor because we're essentially extending this component object. So we want to call that first. And then we can kind of do whatever special setup we want to do for our specific object. So what I want to do is say this.state equals an object and in here we could do something like um, well let's start with one thing and then we'll change it so we could say something like price is five dollars I'm just gonna say five um, we could say uh, what do we have date and then um, and this is obviously just placeholder stuff. And then the time is 09.45. Okay, so then down here, in order to reference this stuff, we can call uh, this dot state dot, I cannot type right now, dot price. Um, we could do, sorry, I'm just trying to copy this thing. So then we can change this to be date and we can change this to be time. And so now these are going to update and they're obviously all just fake data, but now we're pulling in from our actual state of the object. So what's cool in React is that essentially whenever the state changes, the screen will automatically change and you don't have to actually trigger it. So you're just kind of declaring that I want this to always reflect the state so <clears throat> I'm going to actually make one change here because I don't want to hard code all this stuff and really we just want it all to be blank to start, right? So here's how this works. This is how the workflow is going to go. So the screen is going to start. It's going to load all of these components, but they're all going to be empty because we have to actually query out to the API and get the data. And once we get the data back, we want to add it to the screen. Makes sense. So what I'm going to do is say, instead of all of this, I'm going to have a, uh, another object in here, data, and it's going to be an empty object. So you can call a dot method on an empty object. So you could say like dot ticker on data, and it's just going to return nothing. And it's not going to have any problems. It's just going to be blank. So right here, actually, I'm doing that wrong. I just want to do the state. So I'm going to say state.data.price. And now all these are just going to be blank. So now, how do we go about populating this data object? And that's where we need to use another lifecycle event of the component. So once a component has basically loaded, there is a lifecycle event called component did mount. And so this will get triggered. Uh, whenever the page essentially has loaded. Not exactly when the page is loaded, when the component has loaded. So in here, what we can do is say uh, set state. So if you want to change the state, you have to use the set state function. Otherwise, it won't actually trigger the entire process properly. So if you want to change the state, always use set state. Just remember that. 
So we can change this. We can say data, and then we can say price is five, uh, date is something, and time is something else. And if we save this, what's going to happen is nothing because I did not call this. So this dot set state. And so now what's happening is once the component loads, this component did mount runs, and we're setting the state here. So what we actually want to do is now right here, we want to query the API. And then once we get the result back, we want to push it into the state. So before we do anything else, I'm going to set up uh, another folder. So this is what I like to do anytime I have, you know, API or like variables I need to keep track of. I'm going to create a config folder. And in here, I'm going to create uh, IEX.js. So we're using this IEX um, platform. And so I'm just going to call it IEX. And I'm just going to paste in something that I'd already written. So You'll need to get your own API token. Again, this is the public token. So I guess technically uh, it's not insecure or anything to share it. That's what their website says, so I trust them. Um, but still, you need to get your own. It's free, so you should do it. Um, so what this lets us do once we put this in here, so essentially I'm exporting a constant IEX. It's just an object with two keys. Um, what we can do is go back to our component and under the import react, we can say import IEX from dot dot slash config slash IEX.js. So if you're not familiar with how this works, essentially the dot dot just jumps up into the previous directory, so into source basically, because stock row is down inside of the components, and then it goes down into config. Um, so what we want to do now, so we'll save this and just make sure we don't get any problems. So what we want to do is actually query the, uh, the API and get our data back. All right, so let's recall from uh, the first video, I think. So what we can do is say const URL equals, and we use the backtick method here. So we'll say um, IEX.base URL. And I did this on purpose, so I didn't I have no closing slash here on the base URL because it reads funny to me not to have a slash right here. So I prefer to have that. And then we'll say stock slash dollar sign. And then we'll need to say um, this dot props dot ticker. So just like we did down here, we can access the ticker from uh, the props inside of component did mount um, slash intraday prices question mark and I believe it was chart last equals one and token equals oh boy I hope I'm getting all this right so I'll have to like double check this in a second. And then we have, what is it, API token? So IEX.API token. Okay, so that's our URL. So then we need to fetch the URL. Dot then uh, response. We want to call response.json, which is actually going to fetch some JSON from the response um, and return another promise. So then we need to then data. And in here, what we could do is actually say um, this.set state. And I don't want to do that, I just want to say data. So let's save and let's see what explodes because I'm bound to have done something wrong. Okay, so attempt import error. IEX does not contain a default export. What? Okay, so back over here, it looks like I did not wrap that properly. 
Okay, so now we're not getting anything. So let's console log our data and see what that's looking like. Okay, so open up the console. Okay, so you can see here we're getting an array of one object because we're asking for the the last uh, one, right? So, but this endpoint that we're using actually returns back an array of stuff. So, let's go ahead and just do, I mean, technically we could just grab the first one, but I wanna make sure that I always grab the last one. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's say uh, data dot length minus one. Let's save that and see what happens. Okay, so now we're getting the date. Let's close this developer tools. Um, in actual fact, let's open those developer tools and look at what the methods are on the object. So we have date here, we have minute, we have label. That may actually be more interesting to use. Um, and then we have open close. Let's go with the close. Okay, so um, we're getting the data. So instead of price, I want to say close. And then I want to say label here. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, and what's cool if you saw that is Microsoft actually came in later. And so that's one of the cool things about this is it goes ahead and loads the component and then it tries to run all the different queries and populate the components whenever it gets the data. But I want to point out that the thing I was worried about is actually valid. So we're getting data from yesterday here. So uh, as you can see, it's 12 o'clock noon my time. It's 1 o'clock in New York. So that means this data is stale, obviously. Um, so what I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to, and it's good practice anyway, but I'm going to basically pull all of this into kind of a service class of some kind so that there's no dependency upon IEX directly in our stock parsing data for visualization. So we, we may go ahead and build out um, some features with just using the stale data. That might be fine, um, but, you know, if I decide to push this more into like a production kind of thing, or even if we just do it in this like series, um, we will either need to get, I don't know exactly if the endpoint works exactly the way I'm thinking, but I know that the IEX has other real time endpoints. So we'll either need to go up to the premium plan to get the real time data or find another data source. So I don't know if you'll make the exact same choice as me. As far as that goes, I may go ahead and just pay the nine bucks a month because um, it's probably easier than anything else. I'm not sure yet. I'll maybe look around for some other sources too, just to kind of point that out. But what I'm going to do is essentially refactor this in such a way where if you follow along with me, you'll be able to look up your own methodology and uh, kind of stick that in place without any real uh, disruption. So essentially, um, you know, we'll, we'll make this very reusable so that you don't have to worry about if I'm using a different data source than you. Um, in theory, there may be some functionality that you don't get from one service versus another or whatever, but we'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. So, um, but now we've got, you know, a functional, uh, react app that's pulling in data from the API and loading each row individually on this table. So that's pretty cool. So in the next video, we'll do some refactoring. And then once we do that, we'll move on to some visual stuff probably. If you're finding this series helpful, definitely give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. I will talk to you in the next one.